What's up guys, today's video is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an amazing online service that connects you with therapists all across the country. If you need someone to talk to, if you're feeling depressed, if you have an eating disorder, if you're uh, dealing with a loss in your family, this is a great online service that I just signed up for and they actually assigned me with a counselor in literally under an hour. Plans start at $35 a week. You can literally be in your house, have a session, go on your phone or on your computer, have a session with a counselor. They match you with someone who fits your specific need. I don't think I have to tell you guys that I've struggled with bipolar disorder. And so this is something that I'm super, super excited to check out. The people, I spoke with them on Friday and there are just really great people. They really want to get this service out there, especially with what's happened lately with some high profile suicides. Like I was so saddened by Anthony Bourdain and I don't want that to happen to any of my fans. I don't want, to, I want that to happen to anyone I know. At the end of this video, go to my description box and you'll see my link there. I've promoted a lot of things on this channel. This is something that I really think is a great idea and definitely worth checking out. Maybe your problems are a lot smaller. Maybe you're just feeling like, oh, you know what? I'd like to be more confident. Um, it's great to talk to someone and, and I think you guys know from watching these videos that I'm all about that. I'm all about talking to people. I'm all about reaching out to friends. But it's really nice to talk to someone who knows what they're talking about and, um, and, and that's what this is. So go check out it's betterhelp.com and use my code and, and sign up. And uh, yeah, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. <laughs> Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Uh, welcome to today's video. I'm gonna talk a little bit about, um, you know, uh, we're here in Cape Cod and it's really fun. And um, the BetterHelp people asked me to talk a little bit about my experiences with my own mental health. So this will, I don't know if this will be a funny video or probably just be, you're like, Jason, none of your videos are funny, it's okay. But um, this video is, uh, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about my, like my past experiences um, like I know for me, I, um, you know, I was always pretty much like a happy kid. Um, I was overweight as a child and as a teenager. And um, I, I went to college. I was a really happy person in college. I had a lot of good friends there. Um, and then at the end of my uh, senior year, I went to, um, I went and worked at Saturday Night Live. And I worked for uh, Norm MacDonald, who is one of my favorite comedians. And he taught me a lot about comedy. So all the stuff that I try to do on this channel. I learned a lot from him and I learned a lot from uh, Jim Downey. I was about 22 years old when I got the job at SNL and I would answer phones and um, I got to, you know, hang a little bit with people like Adam Sandler and, and, and Chris Farley and David Spade and that was, that was just totally amazing and I was, and I lived in New York in my 20s and I had, um, I got my first job uh, at acting on a, a sketch show called uh, Random Play and that was really fun. And it was like a sketch show, and I did, uh, you could probably look it up on YouTube. There's some sketches on there. I know there's like a John Lennon sketch that I did on there that was pretty funny. Um, if you guys know who John Lennon is. Like, who's John Lennon? John Legend? No, John Lennon. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so I was pretty happy. And then, um, I mean, I, I, this is what I think happened and sort of where, like, my happiness sort of went south. I got married. Not, that's not what I'm saying. To put those two things together. Those two things shouldn't have gone together there. I did get married and I had kids and I didn't really have, um, I didn't really have a, a job. And I was, um, it was tough. It was tough to, you know, I was always sort of taking care of my two kids while my, my ex-wife worked. And, but, but still, tr I was still working, you know what I mean? Like, um, I didn't take care of the kids all day. I was still trying to like get jobs as a writer or I, 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 I one thing I always tell people is like, I think the big mistake that I made when I was younger was I tried to do like a lot of things, you know, and um, and I was like okay at a lot of things. I was, you know, okay at acting. I was okay at stand up, um, and uh, I was okay at making films. And then that's but, but when YouTube came along, that was I just threw myself all into YouTube, and I was like, that's it. I'm only doing YouTube, and um, and that's where you know I've I've had the most success in my life is because. I focused on one thing. So I always tell people that if you're a kid, like it, I tell Wyatt all the time, like um, his grandfather was telling him yesterday, he was like, uh, he's got a great arm. He said, like, why, why is he playing football? Because they were throwing the ball in the water here at the Cape. And I was just like, you know, he's, he's really good at guitar. And I just want him to focus on that. I also don't want him to like 
lose his fingers playing football or something. So, um, but yeah, so that's sort of how I think about that. But I, I, getting back to my mental health, which, um, God, this is an odd video to do, but I think it's going to be good. I think it's a good video, but it feels weird to do, but um, I can tell you're already enthralled. But back to my mental health, I was married, and I, this is what I think happened. I think I did a lot of drugs, and I think it sort of burned out, like, the pleasure centers in my head, and I became sort of like, um, and I did a lot of drugs because I was unhappy. I was like an unhappy person. I, 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 even though the person I was married to I loved, I, was like, I just felt like a bad person because like I wasn't supporting my kids. And I had like all these ideas about like what a man was like supposed to be and stuff. So I, I was just like, I would, you know, party and do stuff like that. And I think it really affected me over the long haul. And I think it sort of, I once talked to a, a nurse and she was like, I, I think you might have like burned out your pleasure centers, you know, for lack of a better term. And so I'd say that by the time I was about 40, um, I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder. And, um, and how that came to be was I was like, I was actually doing Vine. I don't know if you, know, you guys might not know, but I did Vine before YouTube. And I, um, I, I got on Vine and I, I met, um, I met uh, Brandon Calvillo and he, uh, he was like 19 at the time and really, really great. I saw his Vines, I thought they were so good. Um, and I was like, wow, this kid's really, really smart and really funny. I always had a really strong passion for comedy and I, and I still do. I, I just think about jokes all the time and that's like my main thing that I that I always think about and that really what makes me happy making a good video makes me happy uh, coming up with jokes makes me happy and seeing my kids obviously um, and so I um, I remember I would I met Brandon and things started to go pretty well on Vine and uh, and we were, we were doing good and, and I was making some money finally which was like amazing that I could make money from a stupid app um, and the only reason I someone people always ask me like well why'd you get on Vine and I go well I actually had a movie that came out called Jason Nash is Married. And, um, and I was like, oh, I'll just get on this app and maybe it'll sell some of the movies. Um, and it, it didn't really sell. It sold, didn't really sell any movies, but it all of a sudden Vine took off. So anyways, so I would go out with like Brandon and, and, um, and I didn't know David yet. I mean, I kind of knew him, but no, you know, David was in high school, what was I saying? Um, and so we would, I would go out with Brandon and do these vines and we'd spend the whole day and we'd shoot from 12 to 4 and I'd help him with his channel and, or he'd, he'd do one for me or I'd work with uh, my friend Ryan Dune or Matt Cutchell um, and, and, and it was like really fun. It was like a real rush and I would get like really psyched up and like, oh my God, that was amazing. And then what would happen is like my... I felt like, you know, I, all my, what the doctor said was that like my, all my adrenal blockers were like gone. And so all the adrenaline would rush to my head. So then by like seven, eight o'clock at night, I would be like, I would be literally like comatose where I couldn't, I couldn't talk. Uh, I, I just, and so, you know, like my kids would try to talk to me. I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my ex-wife would be like, what's wrong with you? And I'd be like, and I would have to, I'd put my kids to bed at like 7.30 and then I would get into bed at like 7.45 um, and, and just go to sleep. And, and it was like a really, it was like a bad, it was definitely like the worst time in my life where I thought that, oh my God, like I'm losing my mind. Um, and anyway, so I went to, um, <clears throat> I went to New York City uh, and I, um, it's really funny, I, I met, um, there was these people, this, this guy, his name was uh, Brian Koppelman, and he writes, um, he writes this show, uh, Billions, and he wrote this movie, Rounders, and he's just like someone I admire. He's like a really smart guy, and he writes screenplays, and him and his wife, Amy, who also makes movies and writes screenplays, and they're like, it's, they, they told me, they were like, this isn't normal, like, you need to see somebody. You need to go talk to somebody, and for whatever reason, because I, like, admired them, I was like, oh, I was like, well, there's no, I kind of thought like, I thought, well, I don't want to go see somebody because I don't want to change anything that's going on right now, you know, because things are going well. For the first time in my life, I was on Vine, which sounds stupid. For the first time in my life, I was on Vine and things were really flying. No, 
but I was making money. So it was like, okay, great. I wasn't broke anymore, which is awesome. And so I didn't care. And so they were like, you really need to see someone. Amy knows a doctor in um, Los Angeles and you can go see this doctor. And I was like, okay. I was like, all right, all right. And so I went. So I went and saw this doctor and I get in there and the guy's like, um, and this is why maybe you should use better help. But I walked in there and the guy's like, what's wrong with you? And he was like really old. He was like 80, 85 years old. And I was like, I, I don't know. And I, I got in there and I was like really nervous to be in front of a doctor. Like I was really like, I don't know. Like I felt like, uh, like this was like the wrong thing to be doing. I was just nervous to be there. Like I was nervous that he was going to tell me like, you're, you're crazy and nothing's, I can't fix you. You know what I mean? It's like getting results from a, from, you know, a test that like you're afraid that you're going to be like sick or whatever. And also the other thing about like going to a doctor is like, I thought that if I were to like get on medication or something that it would change all my, um, it would, it would change my ability to create, which I think a lot of creative people always have that fear. And I can tell you that it, sorry, I ran out of tape. God, what was I saying? Nuts. Nuts on a stick. That's my swear word that I say. Nuts on a stick. Because I have kids. So I, I always say whenever I screw something up, I go, nuts on a stick. Which is so stupid. And then I, tr I said to Trisha, Trisha goes, I think you need to get rid of that one. And Wyatt goes, no, I like it. And then Trisha goes, okay, it stays. That was pretty fun. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, so the, the, the doctor, anyways, I felt like I wasn't going to be uh, creative, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, going to see somebody and taking medication, it really, it didn't affect me. Let me get back to the story. So, anyway, so um, the doctor is like, what's, he's like, well, he's like, okay, so how do you feel? And I'm like, well, I don't, I don't feel good. I have like a lot of anxiety and I'm just like, not, you know, I'm not happy. Well, of course you're not happy. Like, uh, you know, of course you're not happy. No one's happy all the time. Can't expect to be happy all the time. And I was like, okay, all right, I know, yeah, you're right, it's stupid, I'll just leave. And, I, and then I was like, you know, like, well, I'm tired all the time. And he's like, well, why are you tired all the time? I'm like, well, I have two kids. Well, you have two kids, you're supposed to be tired all the time. That's what two kids is. Two young kids running around, you're not supposed to be out having a good time, you're gonna be tired. So he just starts yelling at me. And, uh, and I was like, okay, okay. And then I'm like doing this in the chair. Like he's just making me worse, which is why you should go to better help maybe because I, you'll get a better therapist. And he's like, why are you fidgeting? What's going on? What's wrong? Are you on something? And I was like, no, you're just, you're making me nervous. And he's like, well, I'm not making you nervous. I don't make you nervous. I've, I've been doing this for 40 years. I don't make people nervous. And I was like, okay, all right. So it was like a really bad first uh, meeting. And then the guy, he, um, he told me, he's like, uh, you're, well, he's like, oh, it's pretty obvious you're, uh, you're a bipolar disorder. Sounds like it to me. Sounds like you have spent half the day, you're okay, and the other half you're uh, comatose. And I said, okay, okay. And by the way, guys, this is just the story as I'm telling it. I don't, I, I am not a doctor, so do not do anything I say. I'm just telling you this for entertainment value. This is how my recollection of the story. And so uh, he goes, well, you're a bipolar. And I mean, we were there for about five minutes. And I was like, how, how do you know that I'm bipolar in five minutes? That doesn't, isn't there like some kind of test or something? He's like, no, I don't need a test. I can tell. I've been doing this. I know a long time. Don't question me. And I was like, okay. So I was like, right. and, and when he told me that, when he told me that I was bipolar, I was like, oh my God. I was like, I, th I thought I was done for. I, th I thought that was it. I was like, okay, oh no, that's it. I'll never work again. I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to be in like a mental institution, which is all really like not true at all for anyone that is. I just didn't know anything about the disease because I had a friend who was in bipol bipolar in high school and, um, and he was like the, the most jovial guy ever. He was like the life of the party. And, um, and he was always just so, so funny, or funny. And then one time I went away to college and I came home and saw him and he was like, and he like didn't, he like didn't speak anymore. So I was like, hey, what's up, Tim? That's not his name. I was like, what's up, Tim? And he was like, hey man, how's it going? Like that. So it was like super scary to think that, oh, like, oh, maybe I'll be bipolar or maybe I'll be like that. And so then he pulls out this, I don't know, this guy is crazy, but, he pulls out his prescription pad and he's like, 
And I had been to some other doctors, and they're like, well, I've been to some other doctors, and they don't believe in medication. He's like, but don't believe in medication? What are you talking about? It's like, because 20 million people take medication. How could you say you don't believe in medication? I fixed every, and I said, okay, all right, I don't know. So again, let me, let me preface this and say like, I've had a lot of conversations with people about medication or whatever. I don't, I'm not a, I am a, I'm only a proponent of medication because it worked for me. I don't think necessarily that everyone needs it. I think a lot of it can be taken care of with diet and exercise. So I'm not saying, but that's why, you know, you really should talk to someone. You don't have to use better help, but just talk to someone if you're feeling depressed. But the point is, is that, um, he wrote me a prescription for Lamictal, which is, um, no, he wrote me a prescription for Lamitrigine, which is generic for Lamictal, and which means it's cheaper. He goes, well, I got three different drugs I can give you. One makes you lose your hair, and one makes you not have a boner. And the third one doesn't do either of those. Which one do you want? Like that. And I said, uh, I'll, I'll take the third one, I guess. And he was like, good choice. So I'm, um, so then he gave me the prescription and I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I got it and just typical me, I, uh, I was just like, eh, eh, I'm not going to do it. Like, that's my life. I'm just like, eh, I'm not going to put socks on. My shoes won't smell. They smell. I, I am a haphazard person and I don't like, I, I just don't like take time. Unless it's with my kids. I do take time with my kids to make sure their seatbelts are on like that. I take care of. But if it's for myself, I don't really like, I'm not the best self-care kind of person. And if I'm sick, I'll be like, eh, I'm not gonna go to the doctor. I'm sure you guys have, know a lot of people like that, or maybe you're like that. And so I, um, he, I got the medication on a Friday. Saturday came, and my ex was like, did you take it? And I was like, ah, no, not yet, I'm good. And I was like really afraid to take it, you know, because like, I didn't, I was so afraid to change, to have something like change about me that I'd be like, oh my God, like, as crazy as I was, at least I like I could manage it and handle it. So I went to uh, Saturday goes by, and then Sunday goes by. So it's already been two days, and I took my uh, son to a bowling uh, a party at a bowling alley, and um, the bowling alley it's it's a it's a birthday party with like a bunch of parents, and when the kids are younger, you have to go to these parties where you don't know any of the parents, and you have to sit there and you have to wait for them. It's it's a good two three hours, and it's really painful because you don't know any of the parents and you're just kind of like, eh, you don't have to say. And then you know, you get up, you're like, you're talking to a parent and you're like, oh my God, I wouldn't be friends with you. And that other person's like, I wouldn't be friends with you either. And now we have to talk about the weather or whatever it is. So we're at this bowling alley party and, uh, and this guy just starts talking to me. And he's like, he's talking to me about um, just like the most boring stuff ever. He's, he's building a deck. And he's like, well, you know, I went over to Lowe's and yeah, I found that you know, Home Depot would be, you know, they had the oak that I needed. And, and, and I just start to freak out. And I was just like, oh, God, I'm like, I just, and like my head starts to like drop. And I'm just like, like really, really, really down. Like just, I felt like a black hole of nothing, like just nothingness. Like I, the only way I can describe it, it was just such a dull feeling. And it was such, just like a blackness. It was just like, um, yeah, I, that's the only way I can describe it. So I, um, my son was, you know, bowling with a group of people and I ran to the car and I grabbed the medication and I, I, I took one and I went back inside and like the doctor told me that the medication would take two weeks to work and in fact it, um, it worked right away. It worked in about five minutes. And I remember being at this bowling alley, like everything just stopped at this kid's bowling alley party, like like kids with hats on and they were like talking in slow-mo and they were like wah, wah, wah. And then I remember I looked at the, um, all the pins in line and uh, I don't know if you guys have ever seen The Big Lebowski, but there's some great shots in the beginning where they're bowling and all the pins like drop. And so everything went in slow motion and all the pins, it, and just like a wash, like literally, I, I imagine uh, like a Gil Scott Heron song. You guys have to look up Gil, Gil Scott Heron, but like, just like a wash just went over and it went from like bad, like to good, like, 
like that. And everything just like picked up. And, uh, and I remember my son came over to me and he was like, he, he was literally talking in slow motion. He was like, hey daddy, are you having a good time at the party? And I was like, yes, I'm having a good time. And, um, and then, you know, it sort of went away. And, uh, and so then for the next two weeks, uh, it's, it, it went away. Like I, I got in the car and I, I drove home and I was like, fine to drive. But I was still kind of like, huh, like, and I felt better instantly. And so that doctor, he really, he really saved my life. And um, yeah, I owe him a lot. Um, and even though he was kind of cranky. And so, yeah, for the next two weeks, I got really, really picked up where I would just be like, I was kind of high, I think, for the first couple weeks, um, which was kind of fun. But then at the same time, like, um, after a while, it just sort of, it, it completely mellowed out and I, I just became, I became like normal me. And what the medication did was, it, it, I always describe it like this, like if, if before, like if I would like drop, lose my keys, I would, I would be like, oh my God, I lost my keys, like God, I'm such an idiot. And, um, and, and it would just spiral into like more and more problems. And, um... You know, but with with the medication, it was almost like a train that like was able to pull me through. You know what I mean? I, I that's how I described it, like a, a a train that just kept going, and it's like it's like okay, I'm I'm it's pulling me through. Like whatever bad moment this is, whatever thing is gonna like flip me out or something, that this medication would pull me through. And so that's pretty much my story of uh, of how things happen. And I still have. Um, I get really tired at night um, and I, at around like 11 o'clock and I can't tell if that's because I get up at like 7 and take care of kids or if I'm just old or if I, I am super bipolar but I've been feeling much better lately um, and, um, and yeah and so that's pretty much my story and I hope you guys enjoyed it and um, yeah and if you're looking to get help or something um, yeah like definitely you know, use my link or go to a friend or, you know, I'd say DM me, but I get a lot of DMs, so maybe not that. But, um, but yeah, if, if, I, if, if, you're, if I ever see you in public and you want to tell me about your personal thing, please do. I'd love to hear about it. And I love you guys. And yeah, that's the end of this video.